Uh, so this is really uh, going back to, uh, in effect, uh, dark ages. very clear, especially in Article 4 of the National Security Law, it embraces the freedoms guaranteed under number one, the basic law, and uh, uh, and, and, and number two, the uh, the uh, uh, the freedoms uh, implemented through Hong Kong's Bill of Rights Ordinance, uh, and, and number three, and it fully, it also fully incorporates the freedoms protected, uh, guaranteed under the uh, two uh, human rights covenants. But if you read the text, the language uh, uh, of the of the national provisions of the national security law, they do distinguish between action and uh, words. Right. So so and, and in that sense, the the freedoms of of you know expression, uh, the uh, the uh, and, and, as well as other freedoms are very very well preserved. But but we we have to wait and see. We have to see how the law is is actually enforced is actually enforced by the Hong Kong police. Thank you. What do you think of the suspensions of Hong Kong extradition agreements from the perspective of international law? I mean, obviously you mentioned a lot about it. But do you think that it's an attempt to politicize the judicial cooperation? It's obviously a part of a, an attempt to undermine a criminal justice uh, here in Hong Kong. Uh, and as I've explained in my in my opening remarks. Quite clearly, if criminal fugitives uh, can commit very serious offences and not be held to account, then this drives a coach and horses through traditional no notions uh, of, uh, of uh, global criminal justice. The idea that uh, people can simply go from one place to another uh, and then claim safe haven there, no matter how vile their crimes may be, uh, is something which uh, the criminal justice system in recent years, particularly after the Second World War, uh, has sought to bring an end to. Uh, so this is really uh, going back to, uh, in effect, uh, dark ages. Uh, so, as I say, the, the whole strategy is flawed. It hasn't been thought through, but nonetheless it is being pursued, in my opinion, because uh, some people take the view that uh, if Hong Kong can be weakened or undermined, then this will adversely impact on China itself. What the international law is on intervention and non-intervention is fundamentally disputed. And secondly, that this dispute can only be resolved by understanding that there are fundamental differences of civilization between the West and, and, and China. And my fundamental point as a lawyer, uh, based on my res critical research of international law, is that there is not a consensus and therefore there is no point in either side battering the other with waffle about legality, what is now called lawfare. There are no easy answers in modern international law to any of these questions. <laughs>